a previous YouTube tutorial, I covered how to build a Power Automate flow that sends a single email to each user with the tasks assigned to them. However, in my tutorial, I only covered a scenario where each task is assigned to a single user. What if your task is assigned to more than one user? In this Power Automate tutorial, I'll first cover how to create a flow that is triggered by selecting an item. This automation will send an email to all assigned users for the selected task. I'll also show you how to adjust your flow so that you can send a message in Teams. Then I'll show you how to collect a list of unique users that have been assigned to multi-person tasks. Using this concept, we'll edit the flow from the previous tutorial so that it works with a multi-person column. In Power Automate, create an instant cloud flow. To save yourself time while building and testing your flow, select the manual trigger. Once the flow is ready to go, replace the manual trigger with the for a selected item trigger. I'll be using the classic designer for this tutorial as the new designer still has a few bugs. By using a manual trigger, you can quickly test your flow without needing to leave Power Automate and trigger the flow from your SharePoint list. Add a get item action. Use this action to get a specific item from your SharePoint list. Make sure to select an item in your SharePoint list that has multiple people assigned to it. You'll be using this item to build and test your flow. You'll need the SharePoint item ID. The ID column is hidden by default. To display the ID column, click on Add Column, then Show or Hide Columns. Check off the ID column. Enter the ID into the ID field. Add a Compose action. However, to better understand how the data is stored in a multi-choice person column, we'll need to take a look at the output. Remember to rename your actions to keep your flow organized. Insert the column dynamic content into the compose action. In my case, it's not any of these, but it's the assigned to dynamic content. If you selected the correct dynamic content, your compose action should not nest itself into and apply to each action. Save your flow and run a test. The multi-person column outputs the information in a collection. Each user's details are found between the curly brackets. When you try to use the dynamic content from the column, such as the display name or email address, your action is automatically nested inside an apply to each action. The apply to each action is looping through each item in the collection. In this case, it's each user. You may think you need to initialize a variable and use an append to variable action. However, I have a much simpler solution. Add a select action. We'll use this action to pull the email addresses only from the multi-person column. In the From field, insert the column dynamic content. Click on this icon to switch from Map to Text mode. In the Map field, insert the email dynamic content from the multi-person column. Run a test. The select action outputs an array of email addresses. To send a single email to all assigned users, we'll need a string of email addresses separated by a semicolon. Add a join action. In the from field, insert the output from the select action above. In the join with field, enter a semicolon. Run a test. The join action has now converted the array of email addresses into a string of email addresses separated by a semicolon. Add a send an email v2 action to your flow. Whenever I use a send an email v2 action in my flows, I always insert my email into the recipient field while I'm building and testing the flows. Once I've confirmed the format of the email, I'll replace my email address with the appropriate recipient. For the subject line, I'll include some dynamic content. In the email body, add a single line of text to confirm who the email will be sent to. Insert the outputs from the join action that contains a string of email addresses. This line is just for testing purposes, and when the flow is ready to go, we'll remove it. I'll highlight and bold the text. I prefer to mark my automated emails with a line of text. Next, I'll include a few text labels and the SharePoint items dynamic content. Run a test.
With a bit of HTML and CSS styling, you can make your email look like this. If you're interested in a tutorial on how to do this, give this video a thumbs up and drop a keyboard emoji in the comments. If you'd like to send a single email to each user the task is assigned to, add and apply to each action. The join action isn't necessary and can be deleted. Copy the send an email v2 action to your clipboard and delete it for now. Insert the output from the select action. The apply to each action will now loop through each email address from the select action above. To confirm this, add a compose action. Insert the current item and run a test. Confirm that the output of the compose action is the email address of each user the task is assigned to. Insert the send an email action from the clipboard. In the first line of the email, insert the output from the compose action and run a test. I've received two emails. The first line indicates who the email will be sent to. Instead of sending an email, you can send a message in Teams. Create a copy of your flow. Add a post message in a chat or channel action. Post as the Flowbot and in a chat with the Flowbot. Copy the content from the send an email v2 action and paste it into the message field of this action. Delete the send an email v2 action and run a test. I've received two Teams messages. The first line of the message indicates who the message will be sent to. I prefer to keep a copy of my flows with a manual trigger. This way, if I run into any issues or if I want to modify my flow, I have a way of triggering it manually so that I can run tests before I make any changes to my published flow. In this flow, I'll replace the manual trigger with the for a selected item trigger. In the get item action, insert the ID dynamic content from the flow trigger. Lastly, in your send an email v2 or post a message in a chat or channel action, ensure that you replace your email address in the recipient field with the appropriate dynamic content. Don't forget to delete the first line in your message body if you've added one in your flow. Save your flow and run a test from your SharePoint list. Before adjusting the previous flow, we'll need to collect the list of all users that have been assigned to the tasks returned from the get items action. From that list, we'll return a list of unique users. Create a new flow. Start off with a manually triggered flow and a get items action. Select your site address and list name. You can target specific items by using a filter query. I won't be covering how to do that in this tutorial. However, you can reference the previous tutorial in the description box below. Set a top count to a low number to speed up your flow run. I'll set mine to 5. Next, initialize an array variable. We'll use this variable to collect the assigned two users' display names and email addresses. Add and apply to each action. Insert the value dynamic content from the get items action. This apply to each action will loop through each task return from the get items action. Add a select action. We'll use this select action to pull the display name and email address of each user assigned to the task that is being looped through. In the From field, insert the assigned to dynamic content. In the first key field, insert the word name. In the map field, insert the multi-person display name dynamic content. In my case, it's the assigned to display name dynamic content. Once I insert the dynamic content from a multi-person column, it automatically nests the select action inside and apply to each action. 
This apply to each action isn't necessary and we'll remove it shortly. First, I'll add another key for the email address and insert the email dynamic content. Power Automate has once again nested the select action inside another apply to each action. You can add as many keys and dynamic content values as you need. Pull the select action outside of the apply to each action it's been automatically nested inside. Delete the apply to each actions that have been automatically added to your flow. Next, add a compose action. We'll use this compose action to merge the output of the select action with the array variable, which we'll be setting in a second. We'll use this compose action to merge the output of the select action with the array variable, which we'll be setting in a second. Insert an expression and use the union function. The union function will combine two or more arrays or collections into one and remove any duplicates in the process. Insert the output of the select action above. Add a comma and insert the array variable. This expression will combine the array from the select action with the array variable and remove any duplicates. Next, add a set variable action. Select the variable and insert the output from the compose action above into the value field. Outside of the apply to each action, add a compose action to store the count of unique users. This action is optional. However, I like to use compose actions in my flows to store counts of array items to help with troubleshooting. I'll use the length function and insert the variable. Run a test. Each time the apply to each action loops through a task, it'll grab the display name and email address of each user assigned to a task. The compose action will then combine the output of the select action with the array variable. In the first loop, because the variable is empty, the compose action simply returns the users who have been assigned to the first task. However, you can see here in the second loop, it's collected a different user. Same as the third loop. Here in the fourth loop, the users are the same as they are from the first loop. Notice how those users aren't collected again. In total, I have five unique users. Now that we have our unique list of users, we need a way to filter each user's items based on what they've been assigned to. We'll need to convert the multi-person column from an array into a string. This will allow us to use the filter array action to search for the user's email address. Add a select action. In the from field, insert the value dynamic content from the get items action. We'll use this action to select the data from the get items action that we'll be using in our final output, such as the task name, description, and due date. Insert the dynamic content into the value field. In my case, the task name is stored in the title column. You can customize the keys for each dynamic content if you'd like. However, because I'll be copying this action into a different flow, I want to match the original dynamic content keys. By hovering over the dynamic content label, I can get the key from it. The key is the text between the single quotes. It's important to note that the dynamic content key may not always match the dynamic content label, which is why it's always important to hover and verify. For the assigned to column, use an expression. We'll use a join function. However, you'll notice that the only dynamic content available to select from is the body and value dynamic content. Do this instead. Insert the dynamic content first. Hover over the dynamic content label to get the key. Remove the dynamic content and insert an expression. Use the join function. The join function is used to combine an array of items into a single string. It takes two parameters. The first parameter is an array, and the second is the separator. Insert the item function. Add a question mark, square brackets, and single quotes. Enter the dynamic content key between the single quotes. In this case, it's assigned to with a capital A and T, no space. Place your cursor before the closing parenthesis and add a comma and single quotes. In between the single quotes, insert your separator. I'll use a comma and a space in my case. Press OK. Run a test. Take a look at the assigned to content. This is how the content was inputted into the select action. 
this is how it came out. All the user's data is now in a string of text. Add and apply to each action. Insert the user's variable. This apply to each action will loop through each user. Add a compose action to store the email address of the current item that is being looped through. This action is optional. However, I prefer to use a compose action to store a value from the current item being looped through as it can help me troubleshoot my flow later. I'll use an expression, insert the item function, square brackets and single quotes. To return the email address, I'll use the email dynamic content key. Add a filter array action. We'll use this action to filter the output of the select action, not the values from the get items action. In the first value field, insert an expression. Insert the item function, square brackets and single quotes. Insert the dynamic content key from your select action. In this case, it's assigned a two. Change the operator to contains. In the second value field, insert the output from the compose action above. This filter array action will check to see if any of the assigned two values from the select action contain the current email address being looped through. I always add a compose action after my filter array actions to output the count of items. Insert a compose action and add an expression. Use the length function. Click on the dynamic content tab and insert the body from the filter array action above. Run a test. Verify that the filter array action is returning the correct number of tasks for each user. Before I edit the flow from the previous tutorial, I'm going to add a scope action to this flow so that I can group these actions together. Rather than needing to copy each of these actions onto my clipboard, I'll nest them inside the scope action. By doing it this way, I only need to copy a single action rather than multiple actions. Unfortunately, you cannot nest an initialize variable action inside another action. It must be in the root of the flow. I'll copy these three actions to my clipboard. We won't need this second apply to each action for the existing flow. However, if you're building the rest of your flow from this point forward, you'll want to insert any action such as the send an email or post a Teams message in a chat or channel inside this apply to each action. To copy actions to your clipboard, click on the three dots of the action and select copy to clipboard. In a previous tutorial, I showed you how to use a filter query to return items from a SharePoint list that meet some criteria. I compiled a list of unique email addresses from a single person column. The flow then looped through each user and sent an email with the tasks that have been assigned to them. I've linked the tutorial in the description box below. You can also click up here to check it out. You'll need to build this flow first to follow along. Insert the initialize variable action to the root of the flow. Instead of using the apply to each action to loop through this compose action of unique users, we'll need to adjust this flow so that it loops through the email addresses of all the assigned to users. I'll insert the scope action right above the apply to each action. Remove the dynamic content from the apply to each action and insert the users variable in its place. Next, insert the select action here and drag the filter array action below it. Instead of filtering the values returned from the get items action, replace it with the output from the select action above. Remove this dynamic content and insert the expression we used in the other flow. Use the item function, question mark, square brackets, and single quotes. Insert the dynamic content key. Change the operator to contains. We can leave the second value field as is since it contains the current user's email address that's being looped through. Delete these two actions as they are no longer needed. Before I run a test, I'm going to adjust the recipient to my own email address. I'll insert a line of text into the email body to indicate who the email will actually be sent to so that it can confirm this flow is working as expected. Let's run a test. In SharePoint, I'm going to filter out the tasks assigned to Jessica and confirm the email content. 
SharePoint is showing that she has five tasks and the email confirms this. What Power Automate flow logic are you struggling with? Let me know in the comments down below. If you found this video helpful and plan to use a logic that I demonstrated in this tutorial in one of your flows, please consider giving this video a like. Do you struggle with multiple nested apply to each actions in your flows? If so, you might be interested in checking out this video where I cover three mistakes you're making with the apply to each action. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on my next Power Automate tutorial. Thanks for watching.